Hi, welcome back to Mingus on Tech. I'm executive news editor Ken Mingus. I'm here with Lucas Mirian and Keith Shaw. Lucas is from Computer World. He's our senior writer. Keith is a multimedia editor for Network World. Actually, IDG Enterprise. But IDG I'm, Enterprise, yeah, okay. My, my column is on He's moved Network up in the world. And we're going to talk about what's hot and what's not for technology for October 18th, 2016. Uh, what's hot, actually starting off, is going to be smart guns. I want to hear about smart guns from Lucas. And we've got Keith here, sort of our gadget guru, with a couple of uh, really cool gadgets that we'll get to in a minute. <laughs> but, but I do want to start first with smart guns because uh, it's a topic I don't think many people know much about. It doesn't get a lot of publicity. And yet it seems like it holds the, the potential to do a lot to sort of at least cut down on gun violence. So first of all, I guess we should say, what's a smart gun? Let's just explain it to people in case you've never heard of a smart gun, what it is. Sure. So a smart gun uh, is simply a gun that's equipped with biometrics technology, whether it's uh, radio frequency technology or fingerprint reading technology that enables a gun owner to... Uh, limit who can fire the weapon. So you can put a certain number of fingerprint scans into a weapon just like you would uh, your iPhone, for yep. example, and it allows it to unlock the phone. There's a mechanism, an actuator mechanism within the phone that unlocks the trigger mechanism of the, of the gun. So the gun will not fire unless it reads the right fingerprint. Exactly. Okay. Fingerprint, or in the case of a radio frequency chip, or RFID chip, you have to be wearing a watch or a ring uh, with, that's in close proximity to the weapon before it's enabled, and it's only, uh, and if it's, the weapon is taken away, for example, and that radio frequency connection is broken, the weapon will remain locked and won't fire. What I love about this is it sounds like something out of James Bond. You know, it's like, yeah, it's, I mean, it but, it, but it's technology that's yeah. actually available now. You know, or well, okay, let me Not back up. Quite. <laughs> yeah. You've written about this in yeah. the past, and and the the problem has always been there's always the debate about you know gun rights and gun safety. Um, there have been efforts to make prototypes in the past, but yeah. they tended to rely on much older technology yes. that didn't really work that well. Yeah. I mean, if, if you're going to be a gun owner, yeah. you want it to work really quickly yeah. when you need it. You know, it's, yeah. it's got to be a smart gun. But more recently, and this is why I wanted to have you on, Lucas, was to talk about the, the advances. Given the technology with biometrics, RFID, that the, you know, there have been so many advances in the last few years, the possibility of making smart guns that actually work like they should seems to be closer on the horizon than it used to be. Is Absolutely, that? yeah. Microprocessor technology is cheap, fast, and readily available now. The original guns, not including RFID, because RFID chip technology has been available for a very, very long time, and it's yeah. been efficient. In fact, Mossberg created a uh, smart shotgun, uh, I think it was back in the late 1990s, early 2000s. Okay. So about 15 years yeah. ago-ish. Ish, yeah, and, uh, and that used RFID uh, chip technology, and, and, and but it didn't it didn't work as well, I think, as they expected it to. They have a new version, actually, the great grandson of Oscar Mossberg, who yeah. started the company back in 1919, uh, has started his own company, and uh, is, is that in the states? Here in the states? It is. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he's down in uh, Florida. Something about Florida. It's a great place to do smart gun technology. I guess so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, he's, he's invented uh, one, a prototype. He, he was just awarded a $100,000 grant from the uh, Tech Challenges Foundation, which is a private organization that's handing out grants, development grants, to folks who are developing this technology. So, uh, and I asked him directly recently in an interview, and, yeah, the technology is enabling far superior weapon, uh, smart weapons. What's, you know, let me just ask real quick. Okay, so let's say you've, you've got one of these smart guns <coughs> that has, you know, the most updated technology possible. Right. When you grab the gun and you need to fire it, what's the, the, the time lag between when you grab the gun and it's ready to fire? I mean, is it quarter, quarter of a second? Quarter of a second. Quarter About a quarter of a second or less, uh, according to these innovators that, uh, that have um, introduced these weapons. I have never test fired one. I'm hoping to soon. Uh, because they're able to make that happen. Yeah, there are new ones the coming boss. on the market. So, Lucas, where where does the resistance to this coming from? Is it just purely from the political side yeah, in no. terms of the NRA, or like what what are you, what are you hearing on 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 that? Yeah, I just spoke with the CEO of a German company, Armatix, mm -hmm. uh, that tried to introduce a 22 caliber weapon three years ago and got so much pushback. I mean, there were gun owners that actually threatened store owners that. Um, had planned to introduce this weapon to start selling it. The problem is that when it was introduced, politicians jumped on it, right? jumped all yeah. over it. And one in particular, uh, Senator Loretta Weinberg, uh, state New senator Jersey, from right? New Jersey, yeah. yeah, introduced a smart gun law back in I think it was way back in 2002. 
uh, long before this technology was ready to go to market. And she basically, the, tech, the um, legislation said, once these things are on the shelves, you've got three years and all other weapons have to clear out. Everybody has to buy a smart gun. Now, and that- <laughs> Okay, trying to do good. Overstepping, I, even I can acknowledge that's way overstepping, and it's just going to get in the way of rolling these it things out. Killed it! It just killed it. I, as I like to say, it did in the crib. Unfortunately, yeah. um, she has since uh, introduced legislation to reverse that. Um, basically, saying if the NRA steps out of the way of you know smart gun introduction, but they really haven't been in the way of smart guns. Right. They're not opposed to this. No, they've said they don't want mandates. That's right. all. Right. They want free market. And every smart gun innovator that I've spoken with to the person has said the same thing. We are 100% against mandates. Allow the market to choose, you know, to decide who buys these weapons, who doesn't. Uh, but never mandate them because no. that's that's just it's a kill switch right right off the bat. So is there? I mean, you know, <coughs> you and I have talked about this in the past. It seems like there is uh, at least a sliver of the the gun owners market where these these smart guns might do well. And you you, you mentioned uh, a woman who was like, you know, had been given a gun. Who was it? What was the story? Was it Mossberg or somebody? She was given the gun and said, I don't want the gun because I'm worried somebody might take it away from me. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, so the uh, the great grandson of, uh, um, let me see, I'm just going to, it's, it's Jonathan Mossberg, but okay. um, uh, he, he has a 21 uh, year old daughter, and okay, a few months it. ago, yeah. she had, she's been shooting since she was very young. So she's very so familiar she's fine with, with guns. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And uh, as a gift, she was going to be, I think, after college, she was driving across Florida. And he said, look, I want you to you know, have a weapon just in For case. Yeah. And tried to give her one. And she said, you know what, Dad, I, I don't want this because what if it gets taken away from me? And that's what he said, there's my market. There's, there's who I'm going to sell to. Because if she has a smart gun and it gets taken away from her, whoever's taking it from her would it not be able work. to fire it. But if you've got a regular gun and it's wrestled away from you, th this is a problem with police officers too. I think the I think police and military are going to love this thing, and I'll tell you why. It, it's got obviously the technology's got to be proven, but as as former military myself, yeah. if I'm on the battlefield and I'm wounded or one of my men was wounded, and his weapon could get taken away by the enemy and used against us. Yeah. You know, what if it couldn't? I mean, that's the, what a great concept that the enemy could not use our weapons. Now, eventually, if the enemy got them, they could bring them back to the rear. They could tinker with them, probably take yeah, the smart technology. Yeah, but by then, I mean, that you're, you're talking but about the heat the of battle. on the battlefield, exactly. exactly. It couldn't be taken away from you. So that's, that's the, uh, the, I think, uh, the genesis for selling into both the military and the police forces because many police are shot with their own weapons. I mean, right. They get wrestled away in a, in a conflict. Uh, how strong is the security on it from a, from a perspective of but, you know, you've got biometrics in some of these. You've got RFID. But we've also seen stories about RFID hacking. Um, biometric hacking is not as, as prevalent, but, you know, there are ways around you, you have to kind of some biometric stuff. As with any security, there would yeah. be efforts to get around. I just got off like, the phone with, yeah. with do, yeah, the CEO. Oh, this just in. Do they promote it? Yeah. Breaking news. All right. I just got off the phone with the CEO of Armour takes over in Germany. Okay. Uh, they are going to reintroduce the 22 caliber weapon that got so much pushback several years ago. This is ago. the one from like three years ago that they were not able to The really Armour takes IP1, yep. exactly. Uh, they got so much pushback. Uh, they're going to reintroduce they're going to focus more on gun ranges now. They have a new technology that allows the gun to only fire when it's pointed at a target in a gun range. Because it's okay. 22, it's, it's not really a self-defense weapon unless right. you're with the mafia. Um, <laughs> and, and, uh, yeah, and, uh, and they're also uh, introducing a, a smart gun lock system. Uh, right. but, but this, Justin, they're going to be <laughs> introducing <laughs> yeah, a 9mm okay. next year, and that is a large That would be a self-protection exactly. kind of weapon, right? Exactly. That's the kind of weapon that you'd use in military, police, and for self-protection, home protection, you know, whatever, carry yep. protection. That's going to be introduced mid-2017. It's going to use finger scanning techno fingerprint scanning technology. Sort of like what's on the iPhone with the home button? Or? Right, exactly, okay. versus the RFID chip that the IP1, the 22 caliber, had used. So you needed a watch with the IP1. Yeah. This is going to use uh, fingerprint scanning technology. It's going to be the same basic price as the IP1, about $1,300. So you're paying a price premium mm. for the technology. 
Uh, but I think it's going to be vastly more attractive to gun owners because of the caliber of the weapon. But I'm bum. Yeah. No. <laughs> Literally. Wait, what okay. did I just say? <laughs> you said caliber of the weapon, but I'm bum. Oh, no, you, oh. You know. uh, it's both quality and okay. caliber. Well, All right, yeah. never mind. Um, that's great. Though. Okay, so basically what you're saying is things are advancing. Yes. Um, there's still some political snafus in terms of, you know, New if, Jersey. If, and if you could take the politics out of it, do you think that it would that it would – the Good technology question. would advance more you or know, that's that's the sixty four thousand yeah. dollar question. I don't know. I don't know how you know, personally, I love to own one of these. You know, I, I want a regular weapon too, yeah. but I'd love to own a smart gun. I just think that's so cool. How cool is it to be able to walk around with a weapon that nobody else could use? Right. You know, are there questions about the reliability? Of course. Could you hack into them? Of course. You can hack into a Tesla and drive the thing if you yeah. really needed to. But you we'll know, save is that somebody for another edition. yeah uh, is somebody going to be able to hack into every individual weapon and, and automatically? No, I mean you're not going to have criminals walking around with you know computers hacking, <laughs> making you know, your weapon hand, automatically go weapon. off while it's I mean, in the holster or whatever. There, there's a little, there's some, uh, um, there's some concern out there that the government's going to be able to track your weapon and shut it down on you, which I don't think, I think they could track it, but you know what? Yeah. They can track your iPhone. They can yeah. track your iWatch. They can track your smartphone now. And people don't see you have a problem with that. Now, well, some people do. I some think, people do. I mean, Keith, would you like to weigh in on the uh, conspiracy theory? Well, that was another. That was another thing about the yeah. whole tracking part of it. Once you start digitizing things, everything can start. to But be isn't that literally going to be true of everything we're doing? I mean, well, I, I, haven't we reached the point of no return? If, we're going off on a different tangent. But which if is we fine, don't, say, yeah. But if we don't say something, then nobody will. Kind of. Right. I mean, right. Well, if you get the Apple smart gun, of course, because they they value <laughs> privacy, <laughs> the iGun or whatever it would be called. Yeah. It'd be called Apple Gun. Yeah. Apple Gun, of course. Yeah. All right, good. It'll be so, environmentally friendly too. You know, you'll be able to bury it. You and can dispose of it, later. you know, yeah. without uh, endangering. But you have to buy a new one each year. <laughs> the new one, in, the i uh, the i gun s two. Yeah, change the size. All right, <laughs> and well, we had to get Apple in there somehow. So yeah. uh, great, Lucas. Thank, thanks for the update. Sure. Obviously, story. we'll be back yeah. to revisit this next year after Lucas can fire, test fire one of these things yes. and report back. Um, but in the meantime, I wanted to turn to Keith real quick. Keith, you've got a couple of, uh, of gadgets here. And because we only have four more Mingus on text before the holiday shopping season will be on us. Scary but true. Excellent. Wow. So uh, I wanted to find out first about the Sony VR system that you've got here, which looks really sort of high-tech space age. Well, you know? this, yeah, this is, the, this is the headset This is the part. latest one that they've got out, uh, right? This is the, the headset part of the Sony uh, PSVR it yep. goes with the PlayStation 4. Okay. Um, it 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 looks exactly like it's, you know other VR units that you've seen. You know here are the. So you put the you yeah, put this the on. Other now way. this is cool. It's got a button on the back right yeah. here. Yeah. And this this kind of releases it, and then it's got a dial to tighten it. Yeah. So to put it on, you kind of like hold it. Oh, you can pull it back. And it then stretches. Pull it back oh, that's so cool. That it goes over your head. And yeah. It'll put it on. Now you see. I, even I with it. glasses, you yep, can wear. Yep. Even with glasses, I can wear it now. And now it tightens up there, and then to release it, you just kind of push the button and then pull again. Yeah. So what's really, you know, and then it connects to your PS4. Now the cool, the interesting part is that it uses a lot of wires. Yeah. Um, this, this particular unit plugs into another box via these, these ports. Yeah. And then that box plugs into another box, and then that box plugs into your my PS4. My God, this is like hooking TV. up my TV and There's stereo so There's so many cables on these things, too. Yeah. Now the other the interesting part is, is this, this is a third-party headset. Yeah. So for audio... You can for, wear a it, for a fully immersive basically. experience, basically, you yeah. put this on over this. Yeah. So I'll, here you I'll can wear it. them both at the same time, right? Yeah. So I, I did. Yeah, I did notice that you, you mentioned that I am wearing glasses. It, it does create kind of a. Um, it's a little tight. Yeah. Um, now let's see if I can find does that the. Hurt on your temples. It hurts. It like the bridge of my nose is yeah. often. So y I can wear these now. And when this is plugged in, then you Wait, get that. Wait, where fully did Keith go? He's gone like away. He's gone away. <laughs> <laughs> well, then the, the, the most interesting part about all of this yes. is yeah. when you. Oops. Oh, sorry. That's okay. When you add the move controllers, because some of the games require these things. Yeah. And these now, when 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 these are all lit up. This is how you navigate then, in your virtual world. Yeah. When you're so so this in some of the games, this this is the you use your hands yeah. like this. Yeah. And this this creates the virtual environment that you're in but but like with the whole setup you look like an air traffic controller yeah uh, again i'm not going to be doing this at the office what, do this we have is, a this price is for on the this home. Yet? i'm just curious this is four hundred dollars ouch okay um no but that's my actually mom pretty, likes high-tech that's gifts, actually you know, pretty I, good i'm trying to th i'm looking ahead you know sorry mom if you're watching for the but, market yeah. this is that's an actually pretty good, that's price. good price you okay. know compared to 700 or 800 dollars for the oculus rift yep. and some of these other higher end yep. ones yep. um it's a little bit more expensive than like the google cardboard and the the samsung gear vr 
Uh, but, and again, and this has about, uh, Sony's saying that they're going to have about 50 games available. Um, okay. So this is initial, on the market now? It's this, available Yeah, now? it came out last okay. Thursday. Uh, okay. Sony sent us a unit, and they were, they were really nice to, to send us all this stuff. Okay. Um, if you buy, the, you have to buy these separately. Okay. Um, and there's also a camera attachment, which is a lot like the Xbox Connect. Yeah. Where it, it, that's how it tracks both the headset and the controllers to create that virtual So what would the whole setup be if you wanted to buy the controllers, the camera? <sighs> Probably the about 650 because you can buy okay. bundles on Amazon for about 650 Yeah, okay. So do you want to awesome. see the other thing too? I do. I All really, right. this is the, uh, this is really cool laptop. All right, this is the Lenovo Yoga Book. Yeah. Let's, let's um, and it really lives up to its namesake because it, it looks like a book. Yep. Um, it flattens it out, yep. you know, so you can lay it flat. Um, it's got a really cool hinge here. I don't know if you can see that metal hinge. Yeah. Um, it, it just it just looks and feels it's really good. It's somewhat reminiscent of the Surface, but it looks, I mean, it's different, obviously. Yeah, yeah. The way I it sort of folds together. Yeah, and uh, now you notice that there's, this is... This it's is a blank, there's no it's, keyboard. It's a blank keyboard, but if you push this button... Let's try it again. Sorry. There you go. Yep, there it is. There, it, it lights up. This keyboard lights so up. The so the whole thing are, is virtual. There are no mechanical okay. keys on it. So if you're using it as a notebook, it comes in both Android you, and Windows. Do you get any feedback when yes, you hit the you keys? Yes, you get haptic so you, it feedback. It feels like you're touching a key. Yeah. Okay. So if I open up like a Google Docs, for example. Yeah. Uh, you can start typing. Let me just do a document. I'm stunned at how thin that looks. You, yeah. get, you, you, get, yeah. the, you get the feedback here. Yeah. Just try to type it. Yeah. Oh yeah. See? Okay. Exactly. So you get, you, you get a little bit of that, like a vibration that, or buzz. Right. You, and it clicks, and you can kind of feel it. Now, the un interesting part is that you switch back to the to the to the blank part. Yeah. It comes with um, a pad of paper, and you can use this with any paper. They, okay. they just give you this. This is okay. Um, there's a little magnet on this one, which so holds you just it. kind of lock it into yeah. place. Um, but then you take a pen, and it any comes kind with this it comes any kind of pen. Special pen. pen this, no, this is just a regular pen. Okay. Um, it it draws ink. I'm going to just draw a little circle here. Yeah. I'm going to just draw a smiley face and say, hi, Ken. And Let's you'll see. see. Oh, come on. There it is. <laughs> see? It shows up. So awesome. Now you, so you draw on that. You'll see. So it just, just kind of mimics the, 